When trailing at the half, the Grizzlies are 2-1 and one, uh, this season. A record of 2-1 and one when Montana's down at the half. They're down seven here, but uh, they had to feel much better, I think, about their second quarter, Bob, than their first quarter. Yeah, like I mentioned, I think the rust is off. But it is interesting there. It seemed they came out real slow and, and a little rusty from the break. You know, that extra week off probably had something to do with that. I know they're glad to get healthy and glad to rest those legs. But I'm sure just uh, the attention away from a game for a week uh, probably had something to do with what we witnessed there. Matt Langford, the kickoff specialist for the Vikings, has it teed up. Second half, about to get underway. Short kick, Seegers from the four. He's got a couple blocks. Flag down. And this good return, I believe, is going to be brought back. There's a flag laying at the 14-yard line. It's like a hold. You know, the referee threw that. It's not often the ref will throw that flag, but he must have definitely saw a hold up front. The player down for the Vikings gets up. That's Jay Johnson, backup tailback. Plays on special teams from head coach. Tim Walsh. On a return, block in the back, number 45 on the return team. We'll go half the distance from the line. First down. Well, that's a big penalty for, for Montana in terms of pinning him back to a bad field position. The Grizz will start at the seven yard line. Out they come, Craig Oaks. Split to the top side of the screen. Down Midget Heidelberg. Here's Justin Green, right side. Green on his feet, stays in bounds. How about that fancy footwork from the big back? And he's over the 25. Boy, he was nimble there. He looked a lot like Lex on that play. He didn't just run over people. He did show some dexterity there and great agility with his feet on the sideline as he dances at the end of the play up for great yardage. Gain of 19 for the senior. And right here, you think he's going out and gets all that weight stopped. And again, it picks up another three, four yards. Great play. Craig Oaks is standing in the pocket with time. Heidelberger has it. Down across the 35. Huge play, no flags, it's gonna count. And a huge first down for Montana. Wow, the talent level of Craig Oaks is very high and very apparent here. This was not the initial planned play, and he sees Jefferson get open, and he just wings it. He really wasn't set on his feet, and he still threw a beautiful pass. Gain of 33 yards. Montana keeping that momentum rolling. Now Tuatelli comes up in the middle looking to blitz. Throw out Teg Hancock. That's a play that worked against Eastern Washington two weeks ago uh, in the second quarter of that game. Hancock was able to get up the sideline. This time stopped after a gain of about three. Well, the Vikings were in a major blitz package there, and so a nice call there. to It had to be quick because they were all over Craig if he didn't make that pass immediately. Second and long, here's Green. Joey King trying to get him from behind, and King with help from Abdullah, uh, but not until Green up close to first down yardage. Very close, and I think they're gonna, yeah, they're gonna bring in the sticks to measure this one. Well, you know, you kind of watch Montana's offense here coming out of the halftime break and say, well, what adjustments have they made? You know, they just, the big pass is the big play. And of course, that's not much of a, that's more of a read by Craig, but looks like they want to try to run the ball again over those tackles. See Craig Oaks with Luther Carr, the wideout coach. Luther, the one that signals in the plays. He gets them from Rob Fennessy in the booth and Luther sends him in to Oaks. Oaks, sharp today as he's been throughout the year. 
12 touch, 13 touchdowns on the season, just four picks. And it is a first down. Toss to Hilliard. Hilliard cut down Odell Jackson, the sophomore from Long Beach, the cornerback, came in to fill that time. And he makes the play, but a decent gain on a first down. Uh, pick up about three yards, maybe three and a half for Montana. That time Heidelberger almost made an excellent uh, spring block on the corner from his wide receiver position to uh, really spring Justin Green for big yards. Green, the lone back, one tight end, Willie Walden on the right side. And Green uh, kind of stacked up, ran into traffic, didn't have much space to work with. So it'd be a big, bring up a third, about five for the Grizzlies now on this next play. See if anybody's slow to get off the pile. It just takes a long time to unravel. That many bodies takes a while. Yeah. The biggest one was at the bottom, number 89, Chuck Jones. Montana with a third down now. They're one of six on third down chances today. Looking to improve that stat, no doubt, right here. Oaks trying to roll. Dorsey forces the fumble, but Oaks catches a break and it bounces right back into his chest. And Dorsey has been on Craig Oaks from the get-go. He recovered both the fumbles in the first half, and he nearly had his third. And what a break for Montana, Bob. That ball bounced right back into number seven's chest. Yeah, watch here on the corner. They try to block him below the waist. I think it's Justin here who tries to chop him. It doesn't work as he shows great athleticism on his own, and then he strips the ball away. And Craig has got to hold on to that better. That was sort of just out there too loose. So Dan Carpenter on a kick of 41 yards good snap the hold down and it is good great kick Dan Carpenter puts it through he's pumped up and he should be freshman gives Montana three more points 21 to 7 the Grizzlies within four Dan Carpenter now 10 of 14 on the season uh, in field goal attempts he has been solid a couple weeks ago three weeks ago against Idaho State in the homecoming game. He missed two kicks from inside 25 yards, and uh, he had to wonder how he'd come back from that, but it did not shake him. He has been phenomenal for a true freshman. He really has, and that kick good. 21 to 17, Sloan with the kickoff. Bodiford from the five. Bodiford's a burner, and a good return up to the 35-yard line. Well, a nice uh, return by the Vikings here and a nice place to start your offensive drive. MontanaGrizzlies.com scoring drive, eight plays that time, 69 yards for the Grizz, and the 41-yard field goal from Mr. Carpenter. For all the latest stats and news on Grizzly Athletics, go to MontanaGrizzlies.com. I'm sure Coach Huck very happy to talk with that first possession, even though it's not a touchdown, it's points. And, of course, Don Reed... Uh, that was kind of his forte when he was coach at Montana, and I know uh, Bobby got a cue from him on that. Play action. There's Brown. Ryan Brown with a catch and a first down. Ryan Brown's a guy that transferred to Portland State two years ago from Western Oregon, and he was the big play receiver for this team uh, last year. Six touchdowns, 685 receiving yards. He was the go-to guy for Weiser. He hasn't played much this year. He's been hurt. Had a flap of cartilage in his knee. You can see he wears a brace on that left knee. And uh, they discovered it as the season began. They did surgery. And Brown has only played in four games. And he has uh, 10 catches coming in, a couple today. But that's a weapon that they haven't had in their arsenal. But uh, he's on the field today. Here's Ruben trying to dance it outside and cut it up. And tackle made at about the 50-yard line. Nick Vela with the stop. Good, good, you know, aggressive moves by both uh, lines that time. The Grizzlies filled real well defensively. They're fired up up front, both of these clubs. Nick Vela, the senior from Castro Valley, 36 tackles, come into this ball game, fourth on the team. Joel Rubin now, 10 carries for 31 yards this afternoon. So the Grizz have done a good job on Rubin. It's been a few Fuquay that's hurt him. And Fuquay is the lone back now. Play fake, come back, and it's dropped. 
and it's dropped and he had some room. There was a play set up, now a late flag comes in. A flag on the far side of the field, but that time the pass intended for Ed Macon, and Macon just couldn't hang on. Ooh, a big holding call on the Vikings. You know, that time Verona, Johnny Verona from DN side, he uh, kind of take took the bite on the play fake with the run over the left side, and they ran a bootleg with the quarterback keeping it. I would think a good uh, point here would be to talk to Verona and holding. say, look, Number go nine. for the quarterback. The offense, it's 10 yards from the previous spot. The down remains two. Because if he wouldn't have bid on the play fake, he'd have had a big sack nine. there. It's going to be second and long. Second and about 19 to go to get to the stick for Portland State. Weiser with two tight ends in the game. They both go out in the field, and that's Whitehead, one of them. Whitehead, who has a touchdown today, uh, has a pickup here of about 10 yards, and it'll make it a more manageable third down. And now Montana going to have to stop him on third and nine. Montana runs a little twist that time with their lineman up front and uh, pays off with some pretty good pressure. So you can see him coming free right at the end of the play. Portland State, two of eight on third down for 25% so far this afternoon, this evening. McIntyre creeping up, now he backs off. Blitz from the outside in the perimeter. Weiser gonna run for it. Puts his head down. Spins out of it and he may have a first down. Warren Utterback looked to have him wrapped up. Shy of the stick. But then he spun and he's gonna be close. And it is a first down. Rich Rose says first down. Yeah, good play on his part. Did not throw the pass away. Tucked it up underneath and Kept the ball in favor of his team and got a chance to move the sticks. You see here, Lauren Utterback comes up to fill, and he's got him. He has him wrapped up with a spin to the inside just enough. So the Vikings with a big play to continue the drive. Montana again showing outside pressure. Now they back off. And not much room there. Good play. Lance Spencer with the tackle, Adam Hogue there as well, but Spencer at the bottom of the pile after the wrap-up. Yeah, nice job. You can tell Montana really well coached on how to play this play. They pull the off guard, and uh, but everybody reads that and fill at the point of attack, and there's really nowhere to go. Again, this Grizz defense pretty stout against the run, second in the conference in that department, giving up 118 yards a game. Kennett, the man in the slot, play fake to Fuque. Ferrigno found a pocket, and he catches the ball. Looked like Tuff Harris may have slipped, the cornerback who was providing the coverage, and it was just enough for Brendan Ferrigno to haul in the catch. And now Weiser, 12 of 19, uh, pretty good completion right there, and he's up over 100, close to 140 yards now passing. Yeah, nice play again, off play action. They don't like to just drop back. They're gonna make you respect the run. And then this is a pass that he has not had tremendous success with as far as the guys catching him. As we mentioned earlier, a lot of drops, but that one was a good catch. Frigno along with Kyle Falk split to the left and a shovel up the middle to Kennett. Kennett, gain of three. And it's Mike Potts along with Johnny Verona to make the tackle. Speaking of Johnny Verona, it's interesting talking to PSU head coach Tim Walsh this week. He's really admired the Montana's run defense and how good they were against the run. And he, he said, uh, those two guys in the middle, and he was referring to Blake Horgan and Johnny Verona, a couple of seniors. He said, it seems to me that those guys have been there eight years. He said, they should be gray or balding by now. I can't believe they're still there. He said, I can't wait till they graduate. And Verona and Horgan have played well this year for sure. And they go right at that pair, Fuque, 
on second down. He's going to be shy. This will be a third and short coming up for the Vikings. Straight ahead, pretty much a little reverse pivot here by the quarterback, and then a over the left side. As you mentioned, good yardage. Now it'll be third and short, and they're bringing in their big guys. This offensive line has two seniors on it, both the tackles, and both the guards for the Vikings are freshmen. A true freshman on that left side, number 76, Brennan Carvolo. So young in the middle for the Vikings. Oh, and a naked bootleg. It's a foot race to the stick, and Riser beats Hogue, and he goes in. Touchdown. Nice play here, Tom. It's a straight T, straight T formation, and it's a little bootleg. I talked a second ago about the DN not honoring the sweep and staying with the quarterback. And he just tucked it around and out and out ran him. Well, we've seen Weiser make plays with his feet a couple of times now. That was the biggest one of the night. And the kick is through. 16-yard touchdown run. Weiser's first rushing touchdown of the season. Comes at a good time for PSU, their lead. Montana now with an 11-point deficit. 6.23 remains here in the third quarter. Blankford the kick and Seegers the return. Good hit up the middle. Good block, but now a flag comes in. Looks like this one's going to go against the Grizz as the flag came in from the line judge on the near side. Yeah, it's in the area of a hold here, Tom, so this will come back again. So Montana a couple times now has been penalized, penalized on the hold on the special teams. Usually not the case. Usually so solid there are the Grizzlies. Yeah, and that'll pin him back, as I mentioned, now inside the 10-yard line to start out this second time in this half. Now, here's this touchdown. I'm talking about the defensive end has to contain here. They run a bootleg. It's naked, meaning no one comes out to help block with the quarterback. It's just a foot race. And, again, the defensive end must honor that corner and contain the player. They're going to run that all day. MontanaGrizzlies.com scoring drive, nine plays, 64 yards, and Weiser, as we said, his first touchdown run of the season there on the 16-yard play. Lex Hilliard up the middle, and not a whole lot doing there. Maybe a half a yard, and again, number 89, Chuck Jones with the tackle. Chuck Jones, we've talked about this guy and how big he is. He uh, is a transfer from Kansas. He played the last seven games of the season last year for KU, for the Jayhawks, and uh, then came over to Portland State. 28 transfers on this Portland State roster. Here's Oaks. Looking to go to the outside, and it's incomplete. Trying to hook up with Talmadge, and it falls shy. It looked like Andrew Dorsey barely got off the field with an injury. It looks like he is injured, Tom. Their uh, senior defensive end uh, is on the sideline being attended to, but he is at least cramped up at this point, and they're attending to him. He is not in the game. That could be a big blow because Dorsey's been in the backfield a lot, getting heat on Craig Oaks. Okay, Montana now one of seven so far today on third down. Just one of seven on third down tries, trying to get that second one here. Oaks going deep for Talmadge. What an unbelievable catch! And there's a flag, but I, we'll see if they what they call, but it was a great catch. That's one for the highlight reel. I believe it's going to be pass interference against the Vikings. Montana will decline that. What a catch by John Talmadge. Holy cow. Well, they really needed that, uh, that completion there. Interference, number 49 on the defense. It is refused. We'll take the result of the play. First down. Rich Rose, a little bit late in the trigger finger there, turning his mic on and off, but <laughs> he got it off. 32 yards on the completion 
from Oaks to Talmadge. And John just got his head around at the right time at the last second to make that play. Had to adjust and turn himself uh, as he was running down the sideline. And it's a huge game. Talmadge again. And knocked out of bounds, but a good gain on first down. And Portland coming with blitz, uh, at least almost you know, every other play. They were bringing backers and uh, defensive backs that time. The left side was totally enveloped, and it's a good thing he got the ball out. Craig Oaks now for the afternoon, 13 of 20 for 205 yards. The one touchdown pass to Heidelberger. Up the middle, Hilliard takes a big shot, but it's a first down for the Montana Grizzlies. Straight ahead run, power versus power, and again off the tackle, which I think is a little better success opportunity here. Good hole there, holy cow. 16th first down of the ball game for the Grizz. Big hole left side again for Hilliard. Cut down quickly, but the hole was huge initially. Abdullah there, Jamal Abdullah and uh, Chuck Jones on the play for the Vikings. Montana going to have about a second and six coming up. Lex hobbles off there, so that was the same ankle. Looks like he tweaked earlier. Yeah, he's, he's limping around a little bit on the sidelines. Justin Green in now. And they go to big number 33. And Jones makes the tackle. Chuck Jones kind of having his way up front right now. He's on the tackle just about every time. Uh, but the Grizzlies are moving the ball. And now they have a third down and five coming up. Justin Green, 46 yards on the ground a week ago. Or excuse me, two weeks ago in Cheney. Oaks lets it go deep. And it's picked off. It's picked off and trying to come back out. He should have stayed in the end zone, Odell Jackson. Odell Jackson, there's a flag down too, but he should have let his momentum carry him into the end zone and just stopped. I, th I think he would have been able to stop. He tried to bring it out and the ball be marked at the three. Well, what that was, uh, Jefferson had single coverage. The safety was not on that side, and so they decided to go deep. Probably a good uh, decision to go deep there, but the ball was underthrown. And then, as you mentioned, he should have stayed in the end zone. He lost 17 yards on that deal, and he's put Montana in an opportunity to get a safety here if they can pin him back a couple of yards. I guess there wasn't a flag. I thought I saw yellow on the field. If there was, it was picked up. So Jackson... He caught that ball pretty close to the goal line. Maybe he did have to come out. He came out anyway, so to the two-yard line after Oaks' fifth pick of the season, fifth interception of the year for Craig Oaks, and they pound it up the middle, and they're out to almost the 10-yard line, a little bit of breathing room. You know, if that ball would have been on the outside shoulder for Jefferson, it would have been a touchdown, but again, just a touch under thrown. Brown, along with Bodiford, split to the left side, eye formation behind Weiser. They go to Rubin, and cut down. Cut down on the outside. Like Kevin Edwards. Kevin didn't make the play. He's hobbling now too a little bit. Looks like he got his knee, but he did an excellent job to get upfield and turn that play in and Grizzlies did a nice job on that play. The junior from Spokane with the tackle and now third and three to go. Single tight end set. Wiser getting happy feet. He's going to run for it and he has the first down and for a guy not known to run the ball Joe Weiser's feet have been hurting the Montana Grizzlies more than his right arm. Yeah, he's making some good decisions throughout the game. Uh, hasn't thrown a lot of interceptions, which I think you mentioned earlier he had been prone to do. But today he's been pretty patient. You know, and 
Uh, Coach Walsh believes that he's played a lot better than his stats would indicate. And we talk about they've had some drops, uh, and he's thrown into some coverage in times when, when uh, he's been forced into it because of they've been behind late in the game. But they're confident in his ability. He's been pretty good today. First and 10. And Ruben dancing around. Mike Stadnick there, along with Kevin Edwards, to make the tackle. And uh, gain of three for Ruben. Well, the Vikings right now would like nothing better than to run the ball and run the clock with the lead like this. I'm sure you'll see a steady diet of trying to keep that clock moving. Joe Weiser has ran the ball four times today, 42 yards on those four carries, and he had, of course he had the one touchdown run. Have not seen much of Ryan Fouque here in the second half. Play fake, Botaford trying to go inside, now outside, and there's a hold, and there's a hold, and you can see that one coming. Shane McIntyre got choked by Mike Stadnick. And oh, Shane, pardon me, Mike Stackowick. Stackowick. And Shane let him know, too. He knew he was being held. He did a little commentary on his own. This is a little swing back screen to this side, and it was so effective in the first half. You'll see it right here, number 62. I mentioned that you would see more screen, and this is one of them. And on the offense, number 62. 10 yards to the spot of the foul. Repeat, second down. And Stackowack, uh, one of the two seniors on this line, one of the better players for, for Tim Walsh on his front five. But that time, he definitely had a hold of the throat of McIntyre. And now that negate that play in second and, second and about nine and a half. Third quarter winding down. Weiser's got a man and it goes off his hands. Looking for his fullback, Alan Kennett, down the right sideline. And a flag down as well. PSU's had 10 penalties called against them today. This could be the 11th. Yeah, it's going to be a hold and it'll drive them back. If they take it, they may decline here. But being second down, they probably will take it. Holding number 29. 10 yards from the previous spot. Repeat, second down. You know, if that would have been third, I'm sure they'd have declined it, but now they pin him back 20 yards for a first down. So Scott Weaver, the tight end, called for the hold. Weaver, interesting story last week, he was suspended for three quarters of the game a week ago uh, because two weeks he got in a fight at the end of the MSU game with one of the Bobcat players. So he played one quarter of last week's game to serve three, a three-quarter suspension. And now we are set to go. Second and about 20. It's like Lauren Utterback showing blitz. Now he holds off. Fuque. Fuque could go. Fuque might go as a flag down, though. It's all coming back. The Portland State coaches next door are breaking windows, but it's going to come back. Well, I think it was pretty apparent it was there because some of the players on the field saw it. But as you mentioned, the Portland coaches are quite upset over this call. But you know, if you hold, you hold. And if, you know, it's kind of like speeding. If the police catch you speeding, you're going to get called. And if you hold here, let's see if we can see it. Nice job bouncing outside. Yeah, you can see Jersey on that corner. And here's another one. They got, was, that's what they got. They got yeah. Ryan Brown. Yeah, there was a couple of them, Tom. The flag was thrown on Ryan Brown, the wideout. Here's Rich Rose. Holy, number nine on the offense. 10 yards to the spot of the foul. The down remains two. And you know, you hate to see a lot of flags in the games, but on the other hand, if it's going on and you're an official, well, yeah, that, you that's what it. your job is, yeah. and, and it was definitely there. No, he reached out and he, with his fist, anytime you make a fist around someone's jersey and pull like that, you're going to get called, and that was it. Second down and forever. They'll go draw to Ruben. Ruben gets a lot of it back. 
Yeah. He gets a ton of it back, so now it's going to be about third and eight. Nice run on his part and just uh, straight up the seam. See, you can see Ryan Brown there at the end of that play shaking his head. He knows that Ryan Fuqua was gone. Third and nine now in the game for Montana on defense. Lauren Utterback. A lot of times in a situation like this, he'll come off the end and blitz. Wouldn't be surprised to see number 37 come in. He's got such good speed. Here he comes. The go for picked off. Thomas. Tyler Thomas down to the 10-yard line. Wow, a little bit of a, a big mistake there, really, by the quarterback. They had everything going. The, the lead, the clock, and the momentum, and that turnover was real big. Holy smokes. He threw it right to him. He I mean right to him. He was going for his tight end, Weaver, and Weaver didn't get his head around. He was expecting the ball to come a bit later, and it goes to Thomas. And it puts the Grizzlies in great position to score yet here in the third quarter. Second pick of the season for Thomas. Junior out of Dillon. Craig Oaks looking to capitalize. Throwing the fade. Talmadge, touchdown! That was an excellent. Probably got away with a little bit of offensive pass interference there. Well, it was an excellent call, though, because Portland State was coming with, a, again, a major blitz. You either got to throw a quick one or a fade, and that was a beautiful fade up in the corner. It's either going to get caught or it's going to go incomplete. And again, a little bit of a mismatch because of the height advantage. That was a great catch. Talmadge able to get separation at the end of it, and Montana. Within four, 28 to 24, the Grizz within striking distance. John Talmadge, five catches today, 99 yards, and then that touchdown. 28 24 now, Montana just keeps coming back. Whenever the Vikings look like they might try to put a little cushion on it. You have to expect that from the Grizz. They've been doing that all year. Here's Fuque. And up over the 25, and that's the end of the third quarter. This is the second time all season that Montana's trailed after three quarters. The other one was at Sam Houston State earlier this year. Down 28-24. We'll be right back. <laughs> 